Hello again. We are still in 1 Thessalonians and this morning in chapter 3 to look at two prayers that Paul has for the Thessalonian Christians in these two verses. Chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Love is so much spoken about and sung about in our society, and so little understood and so little practised. We tend to think of love as relating to emotions. It involves our emotions, of course, but we know that any relationship that's entirely dependent on our feelings does not have great prospects for long-term success. However, when we look at what the Bible says about love, we see that it doesn't speak much about love from the point of view of emotions at all. Much more is said about actions and choices. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. In Jesus' birth, life and death on the cross, of course, we see the greatest example of love that the world has ever known, God's love shown to us in his actions. Now this is good news when it comes to God's instruction to love one another, because whilst our feelings are very difficult to control, we have far more choice when it comes to our actions. So we can choose to exercise love towards God and towards one another. But what's more, God will help us if we ask him. Paul prays, may the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. That's a prayer which we can be sure is within the will of God and which God will delight in answering. It doesn't, however, absolve us of the need for hard work on our part. We still have to take those choices and perform those actions to demonstrate our love, but he does make it possible. If there's someone you're finding it hard to love, then ask God to help. For some, maybe there's someone in your own household who you're finding it harder to love in the current situation, where you're together much more and under so much pressure. I hope that's not the case, but it may be. If it is, pray and ask the Lord to help. Or if there's someone outside the household that you find hard to love, maybe at work or church or wherever, ask him to help with that. Ask him to help you love the person, to give you his heart for them and help you to see them as he does. You may be amazed by the answer to that prayer. Paul's second prayer is that the Lord would strengthen their hearts so that they'll be blameless and holy in God's presence when judgment day comes. When he speaks of their hearts, he's obviously not talking about the physical heart, but neither is he talking about heart in the way we'd use it as the seat of our emotions, feelings or character. In the Bible and the culture of the day, it was used to mean more than that. The whole of our inner state, thought, feelings and will. When God promised through the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel to give his people a new heart, this is what he was talking about. The two prayers we're looking at today are tied together because growing love will strengthen our hearts and as we live out our love for God and for one another, we'll grow in Christ-likeness, in holiness. In one sense, of course, we're never going to be blameless and holy when we stand before God because we're sinful. But when we put our trust in Jesus, God wipes our sin away and remembers it no more and treats us as if we were as righteous as Jesus himself. So you might ask, what is the meaning of the last part of the prayer? That they be blameless and holy in the presence of God. Paul's prayer is that we would make continual progress in the Christian life, that we would grow more like Jesus in character, that we would know and show more of God's love, that we would grow in faithfulness to him. He's completed his work through which he brings us forgiveness. Let's do our share to grow in Christ-likeness and be ready to meet him. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are a God of love and that you have given us in Jesus Christ, through the cross and resurrection, the supreme example of love. We pray that you would grow your love within and through us, that it would increase and overflow our love for you and for others. And that through this you would strengthen our hearts and help us to grow in Christ-likeness and holiness. In Jesus' name. Amen.